Okay, we are recording. Please go ahead. Good evening, everyone. This is the special meeting of the Town Council and the Finance Committee to have a public hearing on the FY25 budget. It's Tuesday, May 21st, and the meeting is due to start, and we're starting on time, more or less, at 6.30. Um, just so the members of public know, if you're not logged on via, you can get on via Zoom, or you can get on by phone, and the phone number would be 301-715-8592. Enter the webinar. Uh, Athena, you might want to put this up, but it's a webinar ID. It's it won't be live broadcast by Amherst Media because they're doing a school committee meeting. Um, I, it's a special meeting of the town council and the open meeting law allows yeah. us to conduct this virtually. So my first order of business is to make sure that the members of the count, uh, finance committee can see and be heard and call the finance committee um, meeting um, in order because we do have a quorum. And so I will call out the names of the finance committee members to make sure they can see and be heard. And Lynn Griesmer then will pick up the other members of the council, but we we do have a quorum of the council as well. So uh, Councillor Haneke. Present. Andy Steinberg. Present. Alicia Walker. Here. Bernie Kubiak. Happy to be here. And Matt Holloway. Present. Okay, Lynn, I think I think I have hit all the members of the Finance Committee. So I turn it over to you to call the council to order. Okay. Given that we have a quorum of the council present, I'm calling the uh, May 21st special town council meeting to order at 6.34. Um, I'm going to call people's names. Please let me know that you can hear us and we can hear you. Anna Devlin Gothier. Present. Lynn Griesmer is present. Pam Rooney. Not yeah. yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, you are. Thank you. And um, Jennifer Taub. Present. <clears throat> present. And did I miss anybody? No. Thank you. About it. So there is no, I am chairing the meeting tonight for the finance committee because Bob Hegner is unable to attend. So I am a substitute chair and everyone can give me a little bit of wiggle room, although Lynn has coached me. Um, there's no chat room for this meeting. If you have a technical issue, please let Athena and me know. To make a comment or ask a question, please raise the right, raise hand button on Zoom. Um, the meeting tonight will start, the special hearing will start with a brief presentation by the town manager. Then we will ask for anyone who wants to speak to raise their hand for public comments. The public comments in general will be limited to three minutes, no more than three minutes, but I will take account of everyone who wants to speak. We've scheduled the meeting to go up to two hours. Um, the um, as, as we you've heard in our council meetings is residents are free to express their views. The committee is not going to engage in any dialogue. If there's a specific question that can be answered about the budget, um, we will try to answer those questions. The First Amendment broadly protects individuals right to address the government to speak and to express themselves, including their right to say hateful and offensive things. I'm generally unable to shut those commenters down under the First Amendment, unless their level of speech falls within the exception. Um, if a question exists on whether a particular speaker is engaging in unprotected speech, I will defer to the principle of freedom of speech. We'll recognize speakers in the order in which they have raised hands. And Athena will help me uh, follow that. So at this point, Paul, I am turning it over to you. Thank you, Kathy. And I think we have a slide deck. So this is a, a shortened version of what you had already seen uh, when I presented the budget uh, in early May. So um, this is the budget that was submitted on May 1st, which is in compliance with the town with the town charter. Next slide. And 
with anything, I do have thank yous. I really need to thank the um, budget team that put this together uh, without our finance director, but it'd be Holly Drake, Jen LaFountain, Athena O'Keefe, Sandy Pooler, who all contributed mightily and wholly to creating this budget. So I thank them each, <coughs> excuse me, and also to the libraries and schools for delivering their budgets on time. Next slide. So this is a budget for FY25. It's a very big document. It looks like this, um, but um, and it's available online. Everything I show you here is online. It includes five elements, the town budget, the library budget, the elementary schools budget, the regional school district budget, the capital in the capital improvement program. Those are the things that are under consideration. The other pieces of the town's finances include the community development block grant budget and the community preservation act budget. They are all done separately. The, the Finance Committee has been reviewing the budget in detail. They've been meeting twice a week, um, and their charge is to return a recommendation to the Town Council by June 4th. The Town Council has until June 30th to approve the budget. Next slide. So the um, this is a balanced budget. The key points on the right are the things I want to emphasize. Under the, the budget coordinating group had in the finance, the uh, financial guidelines by the town council uh, asked us to maintain a balanced budget. This budget hit includes a 4% increase for each of the four entities. And note that the regional school district requested a 6% increase in their budget. And that increase was also approved by three other towns that are part of our region. There's no override expected or requested. Um, we continued to meet our requirements for funding our out outstanding liabilities, which is a very important thing for our uh, financial status, which includes meeting our debt payments, our um, contributions to OPEB, which is our other post-employment benefits, which are the funds that we pay for re to retirees for their medical benefits and to the pension. We included a multi-year forecast so people can see what does this budget mean for the out years. And we have protected the reserves, which is really our insurance policy against any downward trends happening. Next slide. So the budget summary, this is a budget summary. That, again, the four entities are at the top and how 4% looks like to them. And then we have the three things that I just mentioned in terms of what we're contributing. Next slide. The, um, so, so actually, this is repeating. The total budget is $97 million plus. Um, we The guidelines have, requ have requested that we maintain our capital spending. We maintain the capital spending at 10.5% of the tax levy because we have been, we are so far behind in maintaining our buildings and we're paying for that, those, that lack of attention to our buildings now by the need for replacing so many buildings all in a short time frame. So maintaining that uh, contribution to the uh, to capital spending is important so that we can con continue to protect our buildings that we already own. And I already talked about the other things. Um, next slide. So the things that are coming up um, that we'll be talking about along the way is um, developing a fiscal stability plan for the school district. We have seen the schools, regional school district especially, but both school districts trending higher than the revenue coming into the town. So I think a, a really um, serious conversation needs to be had with the, between the town and the school committee and our regional partners um, to talk about what does this look like going forward? As I mentioned, the aging infrastructure of our buildings, but also, and many people call it the fifth major capital project, our buildings and, and our roads. Um, Roads and sidewalks are a high priority for the council, and that continues to be a, a need that the town needs to address. Um, we've been requested to, to improve our recreational facilities um, and also uh, try to do more for our seniors. Um, increasing affordable housing, and there's an, we are using ARPA funds to develop a permanent shelter for the unhoused on a piece of property, which is on Main Street from the former VFW site. Um, we have a lot of capital initiatives in, in play right now, including the library and the schools, and we have two that are, are poised to move forward, which is the fire department and the DPW. Um, the council approved a new rental registration program, and we've added positions for that that are being funded by the new fees implemented to um, char be charged to those who own rental properties. 
And I also just want to mention that the town is going through an unusual period of high level leadership changes. So on the town side, it's a police chief, fire chief, finance director. On the schools, it's the superintendent and a, and a middle school principal. Uh, at the, um, you know, the, the colleges and university, Amherst College and UMass both have new leaders and, and the chamber and the bid each have new leaders. So there's a lot of leadership change going on in our community which um, makes it more challenging to move forward on some of our initiatives. Next slide. And that's, I'm gonna conclude my presentation because tonight is really the night for us to listen to the public and for the council to hear the, the priorities and concerns of the public. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Paul. So uh, as as we call for people to raise their hands for public comments, I want to remind people that this is a hearing on the town budget that Paul has just very briefly presented. And finance is still, as he said, we are still meeting to go over the details of each of these. And so we, we will be making recommendations at, by the end of this month. There will be time later um, in a public forum on the capital improvement plan. Um, and there will always be opportunities for comment at the town council meeting. The capital improvement plan is a specific set of uh, spending plan that Paul quickly summarized is allocating about 10.5% of our budget. So at this point, I'd like to ask for those who would like to speak to raise their hands, and we will call on you in order of the hands. And there are, for people who want to know, there are 29 people in attendance in the public that we can see. And so far, six people have raised their hand. So eight people. So we, we will go through everyone and with the up to three minute rule and Athena will be um, managing this for me, correct, Athena? Yes, I have my timer ready to go. Okay, so you can bring the first person into the room. All right, Jeff Lee, please go ahead. Thank you, yeah, this is Jeff Lee from South Amherst. Um, let's just like to say a few words about library spending. I feel that town leaders have not done a good job of explaining, or maybe you're not even aware that the town's financial commitment to the Jones Library expansion is unprecedented. It's more than 15 times greater than the town has ever committed to a library capital improvement in the past. The last capital improvement, the 1993 addition to the library, which trustees now propose to demolish, was completed with a town commitment of $1 million, with the remaining $4 million covered by a library and state grant. The town's commitment to the current renovation expansion would be 15.8 million plus 9 million in interest payments at a minimum. This represents a quantum shift in how Amherst prioritizes library spending. Remember that the Jones Library is a private nonprofit corporation that has a $9 million endowment and a robust fundraising organization in the Friends of the Jones Library, something town departments lack. It's um, fundraisers who continue to rally their donors to advocate for the project are earning thousands of dollars each month in compensation from the capital campaign. They obviously want the now $53 million project to continue. They're joined by Feingold Alexander Architects who will be well paid if the project continues. They have billed the town more than 1.5 million for design work. And that's what, 30 educator salaries? And we just heard at the JLBC meeting that to extend the project another six months will cost the town about $200,000 to $250,000. Responsible fiscal management calls for Amherst to regroup and find a more equitable and affordable way to maintain the Jones. Amherst should return to the JCPC process that served the town well before the huge project was proposed. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Um, Athena, we can bring the next person in. Okay, Allegra Clark, please go ahead. Hi, my name is Allegra Clark. I am a resident of District 2. I am a parent of a public school student, and I am 
talking tonight about the need to fund the regional budget at, at least 6%. Um, as the town manager mentioned, all the regional towns have funded that level. And where are we showing our priorities if we say no? Um, the things that are on the chopping block would be special education services, restorative justice and guidance counselor positions, world language positions, math positions, a shift in the way departments work, and it would be devastating for our educators and our students. And frankly, it's unacceptable. I know that the Northampton mayor just approved 8.5% funding increase for their schools. And I would like to see Amherst um, follow the suit of all the surrounding towns really, and including the ones in our region. Um, I also wanted to talk a bit about the library project because I do think that with the current bid, it is untenable for us to continue to go forward, especially when we are literally slashing the budget of the schools every year um, to build a building. So I love the library and I think that there could be a more reasonable alternative so that it gets repaired while we still focus on moving the other capital projects forward and the schools as well. And finally, I wanted to talk a little bit about the police budget. Um, I am concerned that my tax dollars are going to fund the police after what I saw on May 7th and what has been reported to have happened on May 7th and whether or not Amherst police were involved in making arrests. They were involved in transporting students who had been trampled and brutalized by other police forces. Um, so I, one proposal that I have heard of that I would support would be cutting the police capital budget and instead moving that almost $2 million there into a project for solar panels at the high school, which would also help the ongoing operating budget of the regional school district. Thank you. Thank you, Allegra. Okay, next is Molly. Hi, my name is Molly Cooksey. I live in Shutesbury. I am an educator at Fort River Elementary School. I'm also in the Coming on This program. Um, and I'm speaking on behalf of our staff of amazing educators. Um, I'd also like to say a big thank you to our regional school committee who has worked so hard with us um, to try to find some solutions to a lot of the issues that we've been dealing with for more than a year. So I feel very hopeful and excited about um, what we have to look forward to, but these things can only happen and we can only look forward to them if we are appropriately funding our schools. Um, I'm very excited to know that Shutesbury Leverett, where I grew up, um, Shutesbury, where I now live, and Pelham have all approved a 6% increase. It's really not a luxurious amount. It's meeting the bare minimum, perhaps, and it's saving some really valuable positions that will um, improve the quality of life for a lot of our students, particularly the students that are most often affected by being marginalized in society. So um, as a dual language teacher, a bilingual educator, I really hope that the town will figure out its priorities and choose to protect our world language programs, our special education programs, our guidance programs. I know you hear it all the time that our students need the support now more than ever after COVID. We say that because it's true. Our students really need this. Our educators really need this. We are trying to scrape ourselves back together and bring Amherst schools into, you know, live up to our expectations of having these amazing public schools. Uh, we can't do that without appropriate funding. So please meet the 6% expectation that the other towns have put forward, work with us. Um, and thank you for taking your time. Thank you, Molly. Okay, next is Jesse Warren. Uh, hello, I would just like to second what everyone else has said so far and request that 
the counselors on this meeting actually like listen to these public comments and maybe address what is suggested and mentioned in them. Um, there were many solution, there are many possible routes towards a solution that were brought up in on the May 6th meeting, but I didn't hear any of them like talked about when the counselors were like thinking about ways that the money could be gotten. My personal suggestion would be appropriating at least a 6% budget increase for the school district and its operating budget and um, transferring some capital for the purpose of building a solar canopy over the roof, over the parking lot at the high school, which could further contribute to operating budget in future years. Now, where to get that capital budget? The police cars are only replaced, or well, the police cars are replaced about th approximately three times as often as DPW and fire vehicles. Yet the DPW and fire vehicles are much more specialized than the police vehicles. If one of them breaks, it might be much harder to find another vehicle that would do the job. But when a standard police car breaks, there'd be at least several others probably available. So, I mean, I just, maybe there's a reason that I don't know, but that seems unlikely. I would, uh, I would like to hear an examination of why that vehicle replacement system is in place, despite what I said. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Um, next is just iPhone. So if you could please say your name and where you live before you make your comment. Thank you. Hi, sorry, this is Julian Hines um, and I am a resident of District 5. Um, my comment tonight, um, I'd like to examine some of the numbers around the possibility of installing a solar canopy over the parking lot of the high school. I want to first thank Mr. Bockelman for um, using ARPA funds to install a similar solar canopy or expand the one that is being installed over Fort River. Um, I think that's a great step in the right direction. But um, when we look at the numbers in the regional school district specifically, um, we find that it would cost about $1 million to build a solar canopy. Then accounting for cost escalation and repaving the parking lot, that would bring it up to between $1.4 and $1.6 million. Um, so when we look at that, we see that um, in FY24 or in FY25 proposed capital budget, there is a $900,000 radio request system for the police and fire departments. And then in FY25, there is an additional nine, or in FY26, there is an additional 900,000 that's planned to be spent on that, both in borrowing, so the town's accruing debt in that regard. Um, and what I would ask is that those funds be transferred to build a solar canopy over the high school. In addition to the obvious environmental benefits um, of having a solar canopy, I think it is also worth noting that it would save about the amount of money being requested, um, roughly $360,000, $370,000 in electricity and utility costs for the schools, that rather than taking from another department or increasing taxation within the town budget, um, it would be feasible to use that money in electricity savings to fund some of these staff positions that are proposed to be cut in perpetuity. And then in addition to that, I would add that um, in addition to the environmental benefits and the cost saving benefits that could save staff positions with this proposal, it is also worth noting that the uh, proposal for the police and fire radios was only proposed this year and um, has not been thoroughly vetted for potentially cheaper options such as those that neighboring towns use. Um, and I would 
ask that before we look into spending $2 million that could potentially be better spent elsewhere, we ask if in the 21st century, um, most of these this equipment is uh, can be done via electronically, via phones, tablets, computers. Um, so I would ask that we look into other uh, options to um, update the radio system that do not cost us this amount of money um, and instead transfer that money towards building a solar canopy on the schools. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. Okay, Nuna M, please uh, state your name and where you live before you begin. My name is Nina Mankin. I live in District 1 in Amherst, Mass. Um, I am, my main comment is about the request to meet Leverett, Pelham, and Shutesbury at their 6% level. I think that they have, they're asking us to honor their commitment to education by, by meeting them at that level. I'd like to also note that while um, the town manager, while, while Mr. Brockelman's um, document showed a 4% increase as a recommendation in the actual budget, many departments are getting much higher increases than 4%. Um, I would, I, I'll talk about that in a second. I would like to say that I believe we must set our superintendent, our new superintendent up for success and that our approach to lowering our budget in the school district is one to slash money, whereas what we need to do is look at a systemic, um, is have a systemic approach to our budget. And the manager Brockelman uses the term fiscal stability for the schools to address increases in costs versus enrollment. And I suggest that approaching that shift by slashing budgets is the wrong approach. I have personally been disheartened by comments I've heard from some town councilors, com finance committee members, and the town manager that suggest a tone of disapproval about the way the regional school department has handled its budget. And I find that to be the wrong tone to, um, to address fiscal issues within a large school department, that the notion of using language that that is the language of austerity um, to pull back overspending is actually um, uh, the wrong language to use. It is it's the language of punishment um, and punishing our children who are going to these schools. And in fact, our budget problems are in great part the result of state formulas that are stacked against us. A number of Amherst families have been meeting with state officials to understand those formulas and understand how we are being affected by those formulas. And I suggest that a number of our public officials do not seem to understand that picture and are instead using a system of blame. Um, uh, other departments are receiving much higher increases, um, which are about inflation and salary increases. Uh, and these are also the main reasons for increases in the regional school budget. I ask you to please meet the other towns in a 6% um, increase to the school budget. And I'm impressed with the solar suggestions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nina. Okay, Kathleen, you are next. Please state your name and where you live before you begin. Hi, my name is Kathleen Mitchell. I'm a resident of Amherst with two children in the schools. I want to urge the Finance Committee to recommend and the Town Council to approve the inclusion of a 6% increase for the regional schools in the budget. With Pelham, Shutesbury, and Leverett already having approved this amount, I hope Amherst will also step up to support our schools. Many municipal departments in Amherst are already receiving increases well beyond the 6%, demonstrating that rising personnel costs affecting all sectors make the 4% guideline very difficult. I'm concerned about the reduction in programs and support and increasingly overburdened staff in our schools. And while I understand that a shrinking student population may necessitate some changes, we simply can't accept schools of diminishing overall quality as inevitable. The regional school's budget is hampered by inequities and inadequacies of state funding, especially the Chapter 70 formula, charter reimbursement formula, transportation aid, 
and the fact that funding formulas assume that only 16% of students in a school district have disabilities, whereas in the regional schools, that figure is much higher at 26%. Decisions made at a local level, though, also are playing a role. Of the over $1 million a year that the town receives from UMass, the regional schools gets only $15,000, whereas Fire and EMS receives $700,000 mm -hmm. annually. While there may be a reason for this choice, it is nonetheless a choice that has a direct negative impact on the regional school's budget. Similarly, the decision to allocate a growing share of tax receipts to capital reserves is shrinking the piece of the pie available to split among municipal services. There are a large number of families who have already begun advocating on a state level for fairer education funding and who are committed to continuing over the next year and beyond. We need our elected officials to be partners in the fight to preserve the quality of our schools, and we hope you will join us and start by approving the 6%. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. Okay, Irene LaRoche is next. Irene, please go ahead. Hello, my name is Irene LaRoche. I live in Sunderland and I've been teaching at the middle school since 2003. Thank you for hearing me tonight and thank you uh, to the regional school committee for supporting our schools with the 6% increased budget proposal. As you consider the budget for the town, I'd like to share the impact of cuts to the regional school committee um, regional school district that we have already experienced in past few years. We have already been tightening our belts and struggling to support the students with less. In the last couple of budget cycles, the middle schools lost four core teaching positions. That would be math, science, English language arts, and social studies. The direct result of these cuts was a 20% increase in class sizes. We have classes with 25, 26, and 27 students. The core subjects are an important part of foundation in the middle school. And we have a team that includes four core plus a special education teacher. These are the home base for middle schoolers. With the cuts, the core staff has had less time to build relationships with these students. This is happening as we're recovering from the impact of COVID and at a time when for a variety of reasons, students need more, not less connection with adults and teachers. As classes get too big, curriculum and assessment that is possible changes. A significant part of our workday for core teachers already occurs outside of the contracted hours, which we are paid for. Planning, grading, and communicating with families, almost all of this occurs outside of school hours for me. Best practices in teaching cannot be sustained with the numbers we have in our classes. The core subject areas have some of our most veteran teachers, many who serve the school and the community beyond the classroom, but many of us have had to step back from some of these roles as our workload has increased with the increase of class sizes due to budget cuts. The state has increased the MCAS expectations. This year we have the new civics MCAS. I am on the committee for that at the state level. All four core subjects are gonna be delivering MCAS. Um, this is also accompanied with a civic action project that the eighth graders will be doing. You may remember the Indigenous Peoples Day proposal that our eighth graders brought to the town some time ago. We love this work, um, but as we have new mandates, the scrutiny of our program is going to be there from the state. We cannot do that without your support and the funds. Our smaller class sizes help keep students out of the IEP pipeline and support them in their needs. And again, we cannot do that without those small class sizes and your funding. I struggle to find space in my physical classroom to sit next to my students. I brought a stool so I could move around. I cannot always find a place to put it to be able to connect with them and meet their needs. And our recruiting and hiring has been impacted. This summer, a teacher in a local district went to a local district because of smaller class sizes. We've never had this happen in Amherst. We used to be the place everybody wanted to go to. Please fund our schools at the 6% increase. Thank you very much. Thank you, Irene. Next is Jen Jensen. Hi, my name is Jennifer Jensen and I live in Conway and I have 20 years experience as an Amherst educator. I'd like to begin by thanking the Regional School Committee for their hard work in protecting public education for our community. I encourage you to support the 6% budget voted by the Regional School Committee as well as already approved by the towns of Shoots, Shootsbury, Leverett, and Pelham. I appreciate that in these difficult times that the town officials 
remember our commitment to its residents, including our most precious, our children. Please fund a 6% budget to show your commitment to meeting our students' diverse needs. Thank you so much for your efforts. Thank you, Jen. Next is Seneca Smith. Hi, my name is Seneca. I'm a resident of Wendell, Massachusetts, and I'm here to also support the 6% budget increase for um, regional schools in Amherst. Um, I am a student at Four Rivers, which is a local um, school near Amherst, and we recently supported and approved um, a budget increase for students, or sorry, for teachers. And um, I know this played a very large role in teachers being encouraged to stay at the school next year. And I'm assuming you all know what the cost of living look like these days. And teachers of all people need adequate budget increases to sustain themselves in these recent um, increases in cost of living. Um, to add on to this, education for everyone is crucial for our future because students are the future and teachers leaving is not going to support anyone. And to add on to Irene, students' connections with teachers are crucial from a young age in students developing good connections with their themselves and learning about themselves and their peers. So I really hope you consider and support the 6% budget increase. Thank you, Seneca. Next is Yell first. Hello, uh, my name is Yael Fierst. I'm an Amherst resident, a speech pathologist at the middle school, high school, and summit, and I'm also a Wildwood parent. I want to speak in support of the 6% budget increase uh, that the school committee is requesting. I want to remind everyone that we are not talking about expanding programming or even maintaining level services at this point. We are talking about minimizing cuts, meaning not cutting at least some of the positions that we know that we currently still need. We are already struggling in special education, we are already, already overworked. We are still doing our best to meet the needs of our students, but cutting more educator positions means that, again, we are asked to do more with less. This means, for example, larger caseloads and larger class sizes. My own kids are in fourth and, and first grades, and I'm concerned about what will be left of the wonderful programming at the regional schools by the time that they enter middle school as world languages and dance are on the chopping block. Our regional partners approved the 6%, and I implore you to show that Amherst also values education and do the same. Thank you. Thank you, Yale. Okay, next is Arlie. Hi, my name is Arlie Gould. I live in South Amherst. Um, I just wanna, as the other person said, second a lot of what I'm hearing. Um, a couple of things. The person who said, um, you know, that the teachers that keep the kids out of the IEP pipeline, I am a former teacher. I worked in Springfield as a reading intervention teacher, and I know from experience what that means. It is so nice to be able to work with kids and get them up to speed without them having to go through the whole IEP process and be labeled SPED and all these kinds of things. The other thing I'm hearing um, is this shrinking uh, class, you know, school age population. And I was very glad to hear a, a person involved in the schools talking about that because this morning at the library building committee meeting, I was making the same point that you know this huge expansion is being had of the library based on this the children and the teens they need all this space meanwhile what i'm hearing is that the school age population is actually shrinking and in fact we're getting older and it's the older population that's increasing so these two facts about the town they don't seem to go together very well the last thing I'll say is the quality of the Amherst schools. I was a Springfield teacher. The Amherst schools were considered the top in the state. 
I was just talking to my neighbor who is a school committee member who said, we're the middle of the pack now. You know, we've lost that status. So when that person was sharing about, we need to get ourselves back up, it's not a competition, I realized, but you know, this school system really did have the best schools in the state and we've dropped from that. So anyway, thank you. Thank you, Orly. Okay, next is Christian Healy. Hello, my name is Christiane Healy and I'm a resident of District 2 with one child at Fort River Elementary and another at the middle school. I would like Amherst to grant the regional schools a 6% budget increase, with ma which matches what Pelham, Shootsbury, and Leverett have already approved. This echoes the points others have made in more detail, especially Kathleen Mitchell and Irene LaRoche, um, so I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. The next speaker is just East Hampton room one, the Prindle. So please I make sure to identify yourself and say where you live before you begin your comment. Yes, hi, my name is Michelle Prindle and I'm a resident of South Amherst on Country Corners Road. I have three children in the school district. I have one rising ninth grader, a rising seventh grader, and a rising third grader. And one of my children is on the autism spectrum and receives special ed services. We've been very, very pleased with the services provided at Crocker Farm. And we're deeply concerned about the budget cuts that are going to impact the regional school districts, especially as they will impact special ed services and cause fewer teaching positions to be available to help special ed students. And this is an issue of diversity, equity, and inclusion also. And we talk about as a town, how we value racial diversity and racial equity and inclusion. And yet last week we saw an extremely military style police presence from our town at the University of Massachusetts to put down protesters. And we're talking about increasing our policing budget. Do we wanna live in a police state or do we wanna live in an educated and civilized state? Do we wanna provide the educational services that our students need to thrive? We also know that adolescents are dying by suicide at rates that are unfathomable. Part of this is coming out of the pandemic and the social isolation that results. And part of it is because we're cutting the teachers needed for social and emotional learning at a time when these children are going through severe changes in our society. And we know that this is the anxious generation. We know that there's social media. We know that there's so much that they have to grapple with. Taking away support personnel and teachers who are there for them is just unfathomable in Amherst, Massachusetts. It's shocking to me. And I see that Northampton just entered into an agreement with Smith College, which has a smaller endowment. And I would urge town manager Buckleman to get into some serious conversations with Amherst College about how to allocate funds to our schools. $15,000 is completely insufficient for the regional school district. Divide it up between the two schools, that's $7,500 per year. What can you do with that? Please take our education of our youth seriously here in Amherst, Massachusetts. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Andre Gadera. Hello, uh, this is Andre Gadera, and I live in Amherst. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank you all for uh, taking the time to explain to us uh, what's going on and to give us an opportunity to, uh, to uh, give our opinions about uh, the budget. Um, the reason why I'm speaking today is because I'm here to support the increase in the uh, uh, budget for the schools. And um, 
So, uh, first of all, I just let me just give a little background. Um, I I went to Amherst High School uh, and graduated there at, in 1984. My two brothers uh, went to Amherst High School. They went to Amherst uh, the to the ARPS as well. Um, and back then, uh, the schools were. I think you've heard it already. They were considered among the best in the uh, in in the state, um, among the best in the country. I mean, they had uh, all kinds of languages. There were people studying uh, Russian, uh, of all things, in the school. Um, that's not the way it is uh, right now. It's uh, you know, it, it since uh, since I've come so. Uh, since I've retired, I moved away and retired and came back specifically for the uh, school system, now having two young uh, children of my own. Um, and this is the place that I chose to come to. My family came here. And once coming, once I got back, I, I've realized that it, it kind of seems like uh, the, the school system is quite stressed. Um, and I would imagine that you can all agree with me on that. Um, what the school system needs is investment. It needs it needs investment. It needs to be uh, seen that it's supported. Um, this is what uh, this is what we need you all to uh, to make happen. I mean, this is what we uh, voted you all for. So uh, please um, see to it that uh, that you do uh, increase the. Uh, Increase it to at least six percent. This is my request, and I, I'm just surprised that I'm actually asking to do that. Um, we need, and we need more special education um, uh, assistance, and um, you know, uh, we need classes with uh, enough enough teachers uh, and not enough uh, and not too many students, so that the, the they have the best learning experiences. We've had incredible people come out of. Uh, this uh, school system. Um, so I'll leave it at that. And uh, I appreciate your time. Have a good one. Thank you, Andrew. Next is Amanda Lewis. Hi there. Um, my name is Amanda Lewis, and I'm an Amherst High School educator and Pelham resident. And I'm just echoing the support for folks already sharing about meeting the 6% budget increase for the regional schools. I want to thank school committee as well as Palm, Shrewsbury, and Leverett for their support so far. Uh, echoing what folks have shared, it's just so hard to imagine what these proposed budget cuts would look like. Um, you know, we're not talking about increasing or level funding. We're talking about triaging. And I think our community members and really particularly our students have shared time and time again in meetings over the spring about the value of these programs. You know, I'm thinking about the high school because that's where I am, but programs that are now so vulnerable in special education, our restorative justice program, prep academy, programs that really serve our students um, with staff who our students love and feel seen and affirmed by. Um, and I really continue to be moved by the power with which our students and community members are speaking and bringing creative solutions to the table. And I really encourage us to continue to put our money towards what we value, even when faced with hard choices and meet the 6%. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. And I'm not seeing any other hands up right now requesting to speak. Um, well, having said that, a hand went up. Erin uh, Hutchison, please. Oops, I'm sorry. Hang on just a moment, please. There you go. Erin Hutchinson, please go ahead. Yes, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Um, my name is Erin Hutchinson. I'm a special education teacher at the Amherst High School. Um, I've taught there for four years, and much like everyone else on this call, I am echoing support for that 6% increase that Pelham, Shrewsbury, and Lever have already voted for. Um, I mean, like others have said, all of our students are negatively impacted budget, by budget cuts, but our most vulnerable students and the students I work with every day will suffer the most. Um, like Amanda said, the 6% isn't even about expanding programming. It's to minimize the damage that's being done to our schools, right, by having budget cut year after year. 
by going forward with the 4%, we would lose guidance counselors, the restorative justice program, world languages, co-teaching, and all these tier two supports and things that we need more of at this time, not less. So I would say thank you to the regional towns who have voted to increase with the 6% um, and for the hard work of our school committee members. And I hope Amherst does the same and goes with the increase. Thank you, Erin. We we have two more people who have raised their hand. Erin Baker, please go ahead. Hi, um, Karen Baker. I'm a teacher at Summit Academy. Uh, I've been with the district since 2008. I wasn't planning on speaking. Um, thank you for hearing me. I'm going to try to organize what I wanted to say. I had a few points. Um, I'm certainly speaking in favor of at least a 6% increase on the part of Amherst. Um, a lot of people have spoken to the reasons for that, but unfortunately, one of the things that I keep thinking is that the town council is not hearing the full, uh, unless you are listening at the various school committee meetings, you're not getting the full message that the school committee received. Uh, people seem to have, you know, it's that time of year, I'm not sure what it is. We're not hearing as many people speak to the town council as spoke to the school committee and the incredibly powerful outpouring of statements that people made. Uh, I. I would like you to maybe even go back and listen. I don't know if that part was recorded, but it's really important to hear the incredible myriad of ways that the cuts, uh, the problems that the schools already face and the effects that the cuts would have if there were further cuts. The students who spoke about how meaningful the restorative justice program was to them, um, the department leaders who were invited by the school committee to speak about their current circumstances and the effects of further cuts. Um, I just want you to understand that what you're hearing in the meetings that I've attended of the, the town council is a fraction of the, the damage that people have communicated is likely to happen. The other main point I wanted to make is that um, to the extent that I understand how the budget works, I, I understand that there's concern that perhaps raising the amount would not be sustainable. I also understand that there is a large amount of um, rainy day funds, I forget what they're called, free cash that Amherst has access to, as well as money that uh, could be shifted from other departments and so on. But the point I want to make is that every year that you can maintain as much as possible is that many more students who are supported while we search for solutions that are longer term uh, there have been various uh, people with the Amherst Pelham Education Association and with the parents who have been meeting with um, legislators, uh, talking about the funding formulas. Uh, we've been meeting as a group around MTA to try to, to figure out how to change the funding formulas. This is something that you could be involved in too. Um, there can be long-term solutions and please tide us over until we achieve those and help us achieve them. Thank you, Karen. Okay, next is Catherine Alkatabi. Oh, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Fabulous. Um, hi, I'm Catherine Alkatabi Stroke. I am a Wildwood teacher of five years in Amherst um, and a resident of Hatfield, Massachusetts. Um, I want to echo what has been said about accepting the 6% raise, um, which, as has been said, is absolutely not enough, but is crucial to be able to sustain um, the amazing work that Amherst educators have been doing. Um, I also want, just wanted to share as a music educator, I know that specials were one of the things that was um, being feared to be cut. And while I am so grateful that it was not cut because of um, um, cuts that did not have to happen, um, it just makes me think of all of the cuts that would have to happen without this um, increase and cuts that would have to happen in the future. Um, so yeah, just wanted to, to strongly um, give my recommendation of accepting the 6% raise um, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> okay, Amy Common, please go ahead. 
Hi, my name is Amy Kalman, she, her, and I'm a resident of Amherst in District 3. I'm a speech language pathologist in the Amherst Regional Schools, and I have children who have attended the schools, um, one student who's still at the high school. I am deeply concerned that we keep having to show up to meetings and represent this message, but thank you for hearing it. And I'm so inspired by the fact that the Regional School Committee had the courage to vote through, through an 8% budget of level funding. I'm discouraged that we're looking at a 6% compromise, but it's vital that we really support the 6% compromise. Um, I work with students who have communication challenges, who have special education learning needs, and I'm really gifted to be able to be in classrooms with that are inclusion classrooms, right? With students who have a range of learning profiles and some of the most powerful messaging that um, I hope again to refer you back to some of the letters that have been written, some of the people who have come to regional school committee meetings and have spoken um, are minority, sorry, they're not going by that, multicultural student um, achievement scholars spoke to the entire faculty at the high school um, and spoke passionately about how the cuts impact some of the teachers who they are able to connect with and who represent them. The cuts disproportionately are cutting, um, are impacting people who represent and help our students feel comfortable and at home in school, helping them show up. And we know we have chronic attendance issues that are an issue nationally, but also in Amherst. If we cut the youngest, the most diverse in terms of gender affirming identities, various right, racial and ethnic identities, those are the, the teachers that are absolutely needed in our schools. Um, we've been struggling for years since the pandemic closure to repair the community. And students feel the love and connection the relationship that they have with educators who keep showing up and show, I did this, you can do this too. Please consider funding the 6% um, and please reach out to us if you need more information about why the schools need these funds to support our students. It's an incredibly challenging task right now and we appreciate your support and your service. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Next is Michael Cardozo. Hi, this is Mike Cardozo. I'm a biology teacher at Amherst Regional High School. I'm also speaking in support of the 6% increase and want to thank uh, the school committee for the regional school committee for their support of our schools and the other neighboring towns in the regional district. Um, a lot of people have spoken about all the the likely devastating consequences of the budget cut, and I agree with everything that has been said about that. So in the interest of um, saying something from a slightly different perspective, I just want to mention that if you are financially minded and thinking of these things more in, in the terms of how you're going to make the numbers work. Uh, investing in the schools is an investment in the, the revenue to the town. Um, this town has always had a reputation to attract people, including my own family when I originally moved to the district because of the quality of the schools. And with that comes revenue for the town when you attract um, families, professionals and people who will contribute to the economy of the town, I think that just from a financial perspective, it is worth the investment, even if the structure of the yearly budget cycle makes us tend to think short term. If it is possible to think longer term, I believe there will be a payoff to avoid the detrimental effects of this um, in the cut that we might be going through to get through this immediate year, we will, it will pay off financially in addition to all the moral, ethical, and uh, 
all the human reasons that we've already been discussing about our students. So I just wanted to add that perspective and I thank you for your consideration uh, of this. Thank you, Michael. Uh, next is Ellen J. G. Please go ahead. Hi, um, can you hear me? Yes. Great. I'm Ellen Jedry Gadera. I'm a resident of Amherst and I have two children, uh, one in elementary school at Crocker Farm and a preschooler. I'm also a member of the Special Education Parent Advisory Council for the school district. Um, as many others have urged, uh, I'm asking you to please approve the 6% increase um, that will preserve critically important funding for um, our important programs like world languages, restorative justice, and especially special education in uh, the middle and high school. Um, excuse me, I'd like to thank the regional school committee as others have for voting um, the budget that they did. The reason that our family moved to Amherst in the first place was for education. We, we knew Amherst had a, a reputation for putting education first and had a very good reputation for special education as well. That is why we came here. That's why we bought a house here. And to see the cuts coming again and again, it's going to drive families away. And it will, it will probably drive our family away if we, if we continue to see what's happening. Um, this is why we're here. This is what we believed Amherst was really all about. And I urge you to approve the 6% increase and it's not enough, but um, at least, you know, keep it, keep it to a limit while we try to work on other solutions. And thank you all for your time. Thank you, Ellen. Okay, next is Rachel Hall. Please go ahead, Rachel. Hi folks, I'm just calling in to thank you so much for all your work and to plead that you give the 6% increase to support what everyone else on this meeting has already said. I think we desperately need this and thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Rachel. And right now I'm not seeing any other hands and I actually want to I want to really thank everyone for both eloquent statements but staying within three minutes um, making them very succinct and and bringing in a wide range of um, information to us this is why we hold these listening sessions and it's uh, believe me we are listening to you um, as we uh, have our next few uh, pieces. So I think, it, it, Gina, it looks like one more hand went up when I announced that I didn't see any more hands. So, <laughs> okay, Megan Makara. Yes, hi. Um, yeah, sorry, I was a little late to the meeting. Um, I just want to echo the same thing. Um, please approve the six percent at least. Um, and same thing as as one of the previous callers. We actually just moved here last summer. Three kids. Um, moved here specifically again for the education. Um, there's a, there's so many great things happening in the schools. Um, we need to keep those things and improve on them, improve especially on the middle school, but um, keeping the, like, the music program has been so important. Yes, knowing that people have the special education services that they need, um, all those teachers retaining great teachers, so many things that are so important. And I really, really hope um, that they will continue and that we can improve the schools and um, everyone can benefit from them. Uh, so thank you. Thank you for your work and for your time. Thank you, Megan. Okay, it looks like we have one more. Meg Graham-McLean. 
Hi, yes, I'm Meg Graham McLean. Um, I have two kids uh, at Fort River um, and they're part of the Comandantes program. And we also moved here a few years ago before they started school for that same purpose that that um, we wanted to be in a place where we really focused on public education. Um, and so I also would love to urge you to approve the 6%. Um, and I really, really appreciate all that you've been doing. Thank you. Thank you, Meg. I'll leave the public comment period open a little bit longer, but right now there are no hands up. Just for those who can't see, we've got about 36 people in the audience, but a large number of them have spoken, a majority have actually. So Lynn, I'm not sure, or or Athena, how long we should wait. I mean, we've scheduled the meeting to have adequate time, and I'm not seeing any other hands. There's we typically no wrap up when when there are no further comments. So it's up to you if you'd like to wait for a few more minutes, or if you'd like to um, seek a motion to adjourn. Okay, I'm not seeing other any other hands, so I really don't want to cut anyone off. But I I think um, we we have two motions to adjourn. One would be the finance committee meeting. Uh, no, wait a minute, I, a hand went up. Um, I think this person has already spoken. Okay, we we don't so, usually do two opportunities. That, yeah, no, it it that is a person who already spoke. Thank okay. you. I do, again, want to thank everyone who spoke. Um, and I see Mandy's hand is up. So I, um, Mandy, I, or Cal I just, Counselor Haneke. I was just going to say, if, if there are no other hands um, of people who have not spoken before, that I will make the motion to adjourn. Do we normally do the council first? It doesn't matter. Then I'll, I, I'll make the motion to adjourn the council. Uh, I second it, and I will now quickly take the roll uh, for the counselors that are here, and that would be um, Jennifer Taub. Yes. Alicia Walker. Yes. Anna Devlin Gothier. Aye. And Pam Rooney. Yes. The council is adjourned. The, the, the rest of us counselors get to vote too. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. I mean, we can we can do it with one motion, but but you didn't call on three of you us. You didn't call on us, right. counselors, for uh, the council okay. adjournment. Uh, Kathy Shane, yes. G Mandy Johanneke, aye. Andy Steinberg, yes. Bernie Kubiak, yes. Matt Holloway, I support that. Both the council. I guess, and... I guess my motion was to adjourn both. Then Athena, yes. Th thank you. The council and the finance committee are adjourned. Thank you so much. And thank you. Nice job. And everyone in the audience, thank you very much for coming and speaking with us. We definitely appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.